West is a very difficult artist for us to get to grips with these days because we look at so much of his work and just think that's terrible. In fact, in his own lifetime, although he was by far the most famous artist of the English-speaking world after the death of Reynolds, in his own lifetime, his reputation was very mixed. And, you know, there's that wonderful line where Byron says that he was Europe's worst dauber, but Britain's best. So the quality of some of his work is a real barrier to understanding him. A lot of it seems very awkward and unfeeling and lacking in emotion. But he was a great artist. Uh, he was a great achiever. He was a great personality. It's quite astonishing if you think, what did it take to get someone to go from Nowheresville, Pennsylvania, not only to Europe, but actually to the heart of the British establishment? You know, he was a friend of George III's. He wasn't just a hired hand. He was absolutely instrumental in the creation of the Royal Academy and the fame of the Royal Academy. Of course, he became president of the Academy in succession to Reynolds. So behind that incredible story has to be a huge personality and, of course, a huge ego. Um, the ego is legendary. I mean, West turned down a knighthood because he thought he should be the first painter to be made a peer. Um, <laughs> He wasn't, but, but that gives you some measure of his colossal ambition. But he also, aside from his sort of personal ambition, his personal desire for aggrandizement, he had great ambitions for art. He wanted to be the greatest living history painter. He wanted to be the American Raphael. He had global ambitions. And I think he genuinely and nobly struggled to revive this very high, high-minded genre of history painting. So much about English art in the second half of the 18th century is to do with the Anglo-French rivalry. Uh, British artists looked across the channel and saw that in France there was this very strong academy system. And... Louis XIV had used art as a sort of weapon of national policy, as part of the French arsenal for world domination. And the creation of the British Empire, following our success in the Seven Years' War, the creation of the British Empire meant that uh, British artists were very eager to be seen as contributing to the success of, of, of Britain. So it was very important for the national strength national sense of pride, even for national trade and commerce, to have a very, very strong artistic profession. And it was thought that history painting was the way to lead the world, because history painting, and I'm using it in the 18th century sense, uh, which means the highest genre of academic painting, which dealt with subjects from the Bible, mythology, ancient history, you know, the most elevating universal style of painting, it was felt that those were the pictures that would have the greatest appeal abroad. So West worked very hard. You know, he went to Italy as a young man. He was in his early 20s when he went from Pennsylvania to Italy. And it's worth remembering, uh, I, I think as Frank McLean very well points out in his book, 1759, you know, crossing the Atlantic in the mid-18th century wasn't a walk in the park. It was very arduous. It was very dangerous. It was difficult. It was frightening. So just to have the drive and the ambition to be this young guy in Pennsylvania who thought, if I'm going to be a great painter, I've got to go to Italy. I've got to see the real thing. And then in Italy, making such fantastic connections that, of course, when he arrived in England, he was immediately very well received. I mean, that's quite a big thing.